Tamir Greens is the director of Kamea Dance Company, representing Israel at the Festival Cervantino, and now in Santa Lucia. And something in between, I guess? Uh, in between, we are also in Guadalajara uh, on behalf of Cervantino as an extension to Cervantino. So this is our third performance in uh, Mexico and in different regions, different uh, countries in Mexico, which is very beautiful that we can uh, do such an extension and make people happy and show them the best of Israel in three places. Amazing. How, how has uh, Mexico been so far? Um, I find Mexico <laughs> a place that is really delightful because the people of Israel, they are very warm-hearted people, very open, very physical, very loud, very emotional, with a lot of uh, big body language. And, uh, you know, we are very, we are less restrained than, let's say, Europeans. And I find that this puts an alliance between the Mexico people and Israel, we are similar in spirit. We're happy, we're warm. Everyone is so loving and beautiful. Everyone wants to help. Everyone is smiley. And uh, we feel very much at home. And uh, we feel that it's very beautiful, exotic country. And we are honored to be here and represent Israel and bring our art, not only from Israel, but also from Be'er Sheva, because I founded the company in Be'er Sheva, which is the capital of the Negev, of the southern region of Israel. So we are even more, uh, more of a warm people than I think the center of Israel. We are very much uh, open-minded and looking for human warmth. And I think we found it in Mexico and we love it. And we hope to come back. Well, I hope too. Um, who are you, Tamir? How do you define yourself? Ah, for myself, I am a choreographer, an ex-dancer, an ex-dance pupil as well, because we all start first as dance students. And then we, you know, develop into performing, into studying, becoming, I was a teacher of dance later. And uh, 20 years ago, I founded Kamea Dance Company. And uh, in 20 year, years, we've built this company to be one of the biggest and most uh, successful in Israel in the world. Uh, the company has now 24 dancers. We brought 14 to, to Mexico. We are performing 100 times a year. As I said, we are working in Be'er Sheva. This is our hometown that is also supporting the company together with the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture in Israel. And... Um, I am a, a dance creator, which means I create something from nothing. I have an idea, and then I work with my dancers, with designers, with uh, lighting, with costumes, with musicians, to make an experience. And I create to make people move. I want to move them in their hearts. I want to give them an inner communicative drama that they can watch, identify with, go through an emotional journey, and this is my aim in life, to try and bring substance, to bring material into people's hearts and to make them feel that there is some spiritual meaning to our lives, not only to work, sleep and eat, but we can also culture makes us who we are. Uh, wonderful. Why did you call it Kamea? I call it Kamea because Kamea is an amulet, a mulatto. Uh -huh. It's a lucky charm. Like in the Jewish uh, heritage, we have the chamsa, the hand. We be, especially the North Africans really believe in it, North Africans, Jews. Uh, and also we have, for example, the mezuzah is also a, an amulet. Or we believe sometimes the red ribbon around to keep the ghosts out and bring good luck to us. Or maybe, you know, uh, some uh, of the Jewish... Uh, a, a heritage some people do for example the that ceremony where they do they they paint the hands before the wedding and they have this kind of a ceremony henna? Uh, the henna. The henna. so it's also a kind of amulato for good luck yes so when i started the company i felt my life was not maybe going in the best direction because of circumstances 
And suddenly I thought, if I'm starting a company in the south of Israel, it's exotic, it's near the desert, it's where there are many people with very Middle Eastern vibes, and uh, I thought the vibes, the ghosts, the desert, and maybe the good luck, maybe this would be the amulet, the good luck of Israeli dance. And it happened. And it happened? Yes. <laughs> why, good why, luck were you, why were you in such difficult circumstances and how did you change it with Kamea? Okay, uh, this is really going into history. 20 years ago, I was a very young choreographer and my, I was based and my main job in my home was in a company called Bat Do Dance Company in Tel Aviv. And the company folded at that time. It was also a school where I taught because it was privately owned by the Baroness Batsheva de Rothschild that died, died at the time. So I felt my workplace is dying. At the same time, uh, my son was struggling with some, he was very young and uh, we, he was struggling with uh, some uh, uh, health uh, issues that were very, very serious. So in the personal sense, I felt that I was in a, a kind of a, a, a time that wasn't good to me. So I felt this lucky charm, this new project will rise and like a phoenix give me new life, which it had because my, the company is my life. I devote my life to the, the company and it's what I do. I'm completely immersed into it. And um, this is my heritage to the next generations and to Israel, you know, building something, a, a foundation, an organization that hopefully will carry on many years after I will be gone. And you also did Meshane Makom Meshane Mazal. Yes, I moved for because I was living in Ramat Aviv in Tel Aviv. And because I was drawn to do the to start the company in Be'er Sheva, because in Be'er Sheva there was a branch of the Tel Aviv Bador school. And I used to go to Be'er Sheva once a week. And Tel Aviv was very reserved, very professional, but very kind of uh, elegant and uh, and very uh, kind of um, taken uh, very everything to the extreme of the professionalism to the point that I felt that it was a, a home, but a cold home. And when I came to Be'er Sheva, suddenly I felt that people were very open-minded, very warm, <laughs> very hugging. For example, whenever I came in the afternoon to teach in Be'er Sheva, the, the administrative director of the school used to come to me, would you like falafel? Do you want a falafel? Do you want us to get you some chocolate? Maybe some hummus? So it was like very homely, very friendly, very comforting. So I think because at that time, at that school, at the Bador Be'er Sheva branch in Be'er Sheva, there were great dancers rising from the school, coming, graduating the school, around 20 years old. And uh, the lady that was leading the school, her name was Daniel, is Daniela Shapira. She also wanted to have like a professional group rising from the school to give to give place to contemporary uh, uh, young dancers to dance professionally in the south that they would not have to leave their place of residence in order to have a workplace so together my desire to create dancers and her desire to create a professional group in the Negev made us work together for nearly uh, 12 years to build that company and when she retired eight years ago, I became the sole artistic director and gave the company another boost. And the company has really, uh, really, it rose like a meta or, meta or in terms of uh, meta or in terms of its success in the last decade. And uh, we heard uh, you have uh, an heritage from the Holocaust. Yes, my father... My father is a Holocaust survivor. My late father, he died two years ago and I was very attached to him and to his memoirs. He used to share my memoirs with him. My mother's parents flew from Europe just before the war started. So in a way, she also do, did not have a family because only her parents came to Israel, but she was born already in Israel, so she was lucky. And my father uh, from Hungary, from Debrecen, he was uh, as a child taken in the ghetto, then into the concentration camp in Mauthausen, and he lost his childhood. He spent, he used to sometimes make a joke about it and say that he spent his, uh, his, his elementary school and he had his bar mitzvah given to him by 
אדולף היטלר, which is a terrible joke, but you know, it shows like the pain in losing your childhood, in not having a childhood, because as a child, he was, till he was a late teenager, he didn't have a life and he was, you know, humiliated, abused and poor and in the camps, nearing death many times, he was a, uh, he survived because of good fortune for example when he was in a train taking to um to to, to the last uh, stop then uh, the allies bombed the train on which he was shifted so he he got saved by it so many times good fortune granted him he also was a fighter as a child so he always like find a way to eat something to manage to live and I grew up on these stories and um and To this day, I carry this heritage with me because as an adult or as a child, to think that your own father, your flesh and blood, was treated this way, went through such horrors, is something that we should never forget, that our people were prosecuted. And very often, especially in Israel, we feel we are the center of the world, the Israelis, the Jews, but we are only like 19 million in the whole world. We're a very small minority. So we should always stand together and keep each other safe and not divide ourselves or the left-wing people or the right-wing people and different opinions. And also the diaspora, people like the people of Mexico. We should always think about Israel and keep Israel as a Zionist country because Israel is the ambassador of all Jews in the world. It's the voice to keep Israel The Jews safe to know that there is a place where, where they will be defended in the case that they will need it. And, uh, and because of the Zionistic ideas in me, because I know that uh, because of my heritage from my father and mother, that I'm living in Israel, because I feel that we should keep it as a, the state for the Jews that will be a home for the Jews at any time. time or any trouble this is why I also am so eager to show my art worldwide and expose people to the goodness of Israel to the beauty of what we have inside in our spirit so they will not always hear about the news and the misled communication about the conflict with the Palestinians and will be able to see that we are a beautiful people and a beautiful religion seeking peace love and understanding I agree completely. And now you you created Mattau's pas- passion 2727. Now this is a, a whole uh, a mix of uh, of uh, Bach of uh, a number which is 1,000 years after it was created and uh, how where did you get the inspiration for this choreography? The, the inspiration was really about what we spoke just a, a moment ago. Uh, I was invited to commission, uh, it was a commission piece to do uh, Mateo's Passion. Uh, and the story is also actually very interesting for the Jewish people in Mexico. There was a guy in Germany, there is a guy called Arno Gerlach, and he's the um, chairman of uh, Kantorai Bergman Gmarke. There are a choir in Wuppertal. And on the repertoire, they sing Mateo's Passion. And Mateo's Passion is a very sacred piece to the Christians. It is Bach telling the story of the crucifixion, of the, bur- the, the dying of Jesus, blaming the Jews, Judas, for the death of Jesus, mourning uh, Jesus and Uh, accusing Judas of his betrayal. So it's a song of love to Jesus, and it's a song in the one hand of hate towards Jews. So Arnaud's father was the one of the drivers of the horror trains into the death camps in the Third Reich. And when he was really, he was a child, and when the war ended, his father sworn him To always devote his life to the Jews, to make amends between Christians and Jews, Germans and Jews. And this man, I think he's around 80 now, has devoted all of his life for welfare, for delegations, for co-alliance, for making peace between Jews and Christians, Jews and Germans. And uh, he got he went to Bayer Kultur. 
buyer for, from a Sudic company in uh, Germany and asked them to sponsor a performance of Matteo Spassion and bring their resident orchestra, Lata del Mundo, into the project. And they wanted also a dance company. And he said, discuss that. Let's go to an Israeli choreographer. Let's take this very Christian piece Who's, who is embodying the hate towards the Jews and ask a choreographer to turn it and make a love story between Jews and Christian through this story. And they came to me to Beresheva one day, the leaders of Bayer with Arno, and they said, we are giving you a budget. We are inviting you for performances in Germany. Please, would you do this work for us with your company? And I was very stupid at the time because I only heard do ballet, do performances, you have budget. And I didn't think how complicated this story is because I need to do a ballet as a Jewish person with a Holocaust background. I have to do a ballet that tells the story about hatred for the Jews, about how the Jews killed Jesus. So I think I fought the idea in my head for three years. And I just told about my own history with my father and then it came together. I found the solution because I said, there is the story of Jesus. But Jesus was told by God because I also learned about Christianity that he has to die. He has to be the sacrifice because he has to take the sins of the people upon him. So there had to be in the story, someone had to make Jesus died. If it wasn't Judas, it had to be another messenger. So Judas literally was also a victim because he had to do it for Christianity to be born. And when Christianity was born in history, this is the moment where anti-Semitism was born. Because from that moment, the whole world blames the Jews for the death of Jesus. And this is where the ugly Jew was born in history. So I took this ballet of Christian mythology and I turned it against the, the Christians. I said, okay, we have Jesus, we have G G uh, Christian mythology, but it's the story of the anti-Semitism as well. So all these broken people that we see in the stories that Jesus resurrects, the broken Jews at the time when Jesus was born. These are maybe the people in the Holocaust. These are the, 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 the Jews that you have abused. And Judas is also a victim because we are getting hate because of this story, the whole of history. So who is the victim? Jesus that became a superstar with millions of fans or Judas who took the blame and we are always hated because of that, but so by so many people. So we are both different victims. So I start my ballet with Jesus on the floor dead, and I finish it with the other victim with Judas on the floor dead. And I show like a thousand years later that we all need to find love and salvation. So it's a big theory story, but it's a beautiful, kind of museum-like photography that you see in the piece, but I gave you my ideas, my interpretation. I don't know if everyone that sees the piece because it's a ballet piece, it's a dance piece, understands what I'm trying to say. But for me, this was the resolution. And this is the maybe the piece that I'm mostly proud the most in whatever I've done in my life. Have you expressed your Judaism in your art? Yeah, I think it's in all this work. I think it's it's not about just Judaism being like religious, even though I'm a bit, um, I, I think I, I have faith in my heart, yeah, but like, and I respect tradition. I think I'm very much preoccupied with the Zionistic idea as well, like that because of the Holocaust, we found a home in Israel. So for example, I think I did a work called uh, Sol, from Solik, from Israeli, being Israeli. And this had kind of memories of my childhood and my ch parents' uh, memories. Rulik and... is a little guy with the, the sandal yeah, with the and head. the Kova temple. Uh -huh. yeah, because of that, I called the work Srul. 
Uh, it was a, a caricature make it called Zev that did this kind of figure in the first place. And that's why I called this piece Srul because I was telling my own story as a Srul. So I think, uh, and I won the Zionist award from the government for that, uh, for that work. Or also when I did Bamidbar Dvarim, the work of love to the Israeli, to the Mediterranean desert, also very much a... Uh, getting inspiration for my life in Be'er Sheva because I moved from Tel Aviv to Be'er Sheva. So, and I think also in Mateo's Passion, in a kind of a neoclassical uh, ballet work, I also bring my Judaism into it. So I don't, I don't think I make uh, the work in order to have a propaganda. I make the work because of who I am. I like to share my feelings with people. I'm, um, I, I like to move people and draw them into my emotional work. So in my, my emotional mind and world. So I don't create in order to make a propaganda. I'm only talking in my pieces, a uh, completely uh, open-minded and decent about how I feel myself. And I invite the audience to join me and find themselves in what I'm showing on stage. I'm not imposing for them to think what I think. It is dance. Dance at the end is abstract. When you have a movement, I can think that I'm going crazy. They can think it's beautiful waves, you know? Anyone can think whatever they want. So, like, um, I, I, I just hope that I'm making people feel that they're going through a, an experience and joining me there. And maybe they get some of my Zionistic ideas uh, not as a propaganda, not as a political idea, as a personal individual spirit that wants to be uh, acknowledged for just really who I am without labels. Thank you so much, Tamir. You're welcome. So and we you... hope to see you to see you more in Mexico. Yeah, you should make us come ask for people to bring us. I would like to come and perform in Mexico City, which we haven't done this time. Okay. So we should think of making that happen as well. Yes, we will try to make it happen and it will be an honor to meet you in person. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Muchas gracias. Viva le Mexico. Viva le Jews in all the world. <laughs> <laughs>